Hello and welcome. This is my second video on advanced integration techniques, part two. It's uh, Calculus 2 stuff. So I'm just going to be doing a few more examples of some of the different tricks that you can use for some integrals that are generally harder than the ones from Calculus 1. Okay, so example. We're just going to be doing some examples here. First example. Instructions are evaluate, evaluate, okay, and for our first example, we're doing the integral of dx over 9 e to the negative 2x plus e to the 2x, okay, so the integral of dx over 9 e to the negative 2x plus e to the 2x. So now, if you try to do u substitution the way this one is written, you aren't going to have much luck. Um, I guess you could let u be e to the 2x, and then this one would be u to the negative 1. But that probably won't work. Um, I mean, you could play games with u-substitution. Sometimes it works, but usually when you get a problem like this, you need a new trick. And actually, the trick here is to um, realize that e to the negative 2x is the same as 1 over e to the positive 2x. That's the first thing you need to recognize here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as... The integral of dx over 9 over e to the positive 2x plus e to the 2x. Okay, and remember you can do that whenever you have a negative exponent. Um, you can make that negative exponent positive by moving it across the division bar. So I went ahead and I moved that e to the negative 2x down to the denominator of the 9, and that became positive e to the 2x, e to the positive 2x, rather. Okay, so um, that's your first trick. And then um, the second trick is to go ahead and get rid of that denominator. So instead of writing e to the 2x over here, I'm going to write e to the 2x over 1. Okay, so e to the 2x over 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, build these to a common denominator. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, um, looking at this denominator, I have an e to the 2x. Here I just have 1. So that means I need to multiply this fraction on the top and the bottom by e to the 2x. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to actually multiply this second fraction here by e to the 2x on the top and the bottom. And you're allowed to do that because e to the 2x over e to the 2x is just 1. Okay, so how is that going to help us? Well, um, here we're going to be adding the exponents with the e to the 2x times e to the 2x. If you're multiplying exponentials with the same base, you add the exponent. So that's going to be e to the 2x plus 2x, which is e to the 4x. Okay, so we have the integral of dx over 9 plus e to the 4x. So how did I get e to the 4x? I did e to the 2x plus 2x is e to the 4x. And now uh, we have a common denominator here on the bottom. So notice we have e to the 2x here and e to the 2x there. So now I can write this entire um, fraction on the bottom over e to the 2x. Okay, you might be wondering, well, how does that help us? That looks kind of messy. And it is kind of messy, but what we can do is remember when you're dividing by a fraction that's just one single fraction like this, that's the same as flipping it over and multiplying. So if we take the reciprocal of this fraction on the bottom, 
then uh, now the e to the 2x is actually going to be on the top. So we're going to have the integral of e to the 2x dx on the top. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 9 plus e to the 4x. Okay? And there's other ways of simplifying. This is called a complex fraction. There's other ways of simplifying complex fractions, but this is the way that I like to teach it because it's the least confusing for most people, even though it's probably not the fastest. Okay, so anyway, um, what we can do here is we can start getting a little bit more creative. So now um, it's starting to get in a form where we might be able to do a u substitution. But we have an e to the 2x on the top and an e to the 4x on the bottom. So if we look at our formula sheet, oh, I closed it. Let me open it back up again. If we look at our formula sheet, um, usually in the week 3 or week 2 module, depending on which course you're in, um, if you look on the formula sheet, dot, 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 still downloading it, uh, zoom in, what we're looking for is something in this form. So if we notice the e to the 4x, we could actually rewrite that as um, e to the 2x squared, and we can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. So I think that's going to be the trick here. So on the top we have e to the 2x, and then on the bottom, we have 3 squared plus e to the 2x squared. And then I'll bring the dx out front. So now this is looking like it's in the form um, 1 over a squared plus u squared du. In fact, that's, that's basically the form it's in. Now, now, how do I know it's in the form 1 over a squared plus u squared du? Well, the derivative... Um, I think the derivatives are going to end up canceling out, so I think we're going to be good here. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking at this point. So, um, 1 over a squared plus u squared dx is what is written here. It's supposed to say du. Um, is The integral of that is 1 over a tan inverse of u over a plus c. So we just need to get it in that format. Okay, so here we're going to let um, a is going to be 3. Okay, so a is going to equal 3, and then e of the 2x is going to be u. And of course, we have to do the whole u substitution thing. So uh, taking the derivative of both sides, we're going to get du dx equals 2 e to the 2x, right? Because the derivative of e to the whatever is e to the whatever, and then times the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of 2x is going to be 2. Okay, and then if we divide both sides um, by 2e to the 2x, so move that down there, and then multiply both sides by dx, we're going to get um, a du over 2e to the 2x. Okay, so du over 2e to the 2x equals dx. Okay, and that's something we can plug in and stuff is going to cancel out. So if we plug in du over 2e to the 2x for our dx here, then we're going to be good because the e to the 2x's are going to cancel out. Okay, so what we got here um, is we've got the integral of, in the numerator we have e to the 2x, and then in the denominator we have a squared plus u squared, and then instead of dx, now we have du over 2e to the 2x. du over 2e to the 2x. Okay, and then the e to the 2x's cancel out, and we can factor out uh, the 1 half out front because it's a constant. Okay, so if we bring the 1 half out front, we have 1 half times the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared du. 
And once we get it in that format, then we're ready to use our formula that we were shooting for here. And I know some of these say DX. I don't know why that is. I did not make this formula sheet. It was actually a colleague. I should probably go and figure out how to edit a PDF, but I've been too lazy because it's so good overall that I still am using it. But anyway, um, the integral of this is 1 over a tan inverse of u over a plus c. Okay, so we're going to have 1 half times 1 over a times tan inverse of u over a plus c. Okay, and we're writing plus c because we don't have any numbers to plug in. This was an indefinite integral. If we go back up here to the original, it was an indefinite integral. So we, since we don't have numbers to plug in, we write plus c at the end. Okay, of course, we're not quite done. We still have to plug in what a and u are. So we said a was 3 and u is e to the 2x. Okay, so we have 1 half times one-third tan inverse of e to the 2x over 3 plus c. And then how do we multiply fractions? Let's see, we multiply fractions straight across. Okay, so for the one-half times one-third, we're just going to be multiplying on the top and on the bottom. So on the top, 1 times 1 is 1, and then on the bottom, 2 times 3 is 6. So at the end here, we should have 1 sixth tan inverse of e to the 2x over 3 plus c. And I don't need those parentheses anymore. So we're just going to have 1 sixth tan inverse of parentheses e to the 2x over 3 plus c. Okay, and that completes the first example from this video. Okay, and um, all right, so we're good. Okay, and that's what they got on my math lab as well, so good job. Okay, so let's take a look at example number two. Now this next one is, has got some different techniques, some more advanced integral techniques. Um, so example number two is a bit tricky, but we're going to figure out how to do this. Okay, so for example number two, we have the integral from two to two plus root three. The integral from two to two plus root three of 5dx over 5 plus x squared minus 4x. Okay, so the integral, that's for x. x is going from 2 to 2 plus root 3. And we're integrating 5dx all over 5 plus x squared minus 4x. So with this one, um, you can't really use polynomial long division because the numerator is, well, it is a polynomial, but it's just a constant, so it's not going to be effective. It's not going to work. You need to at least have a, a power up here in order to try polynomial long division. So polynomial long division is out, and if you try to use u substitution, you're not going to have any luck. And if you try to use a formula the way it's written, I don't think you're going to have any luck. However, one thing we can do down here, which I believe is the technique that they were thinking that you were supposed to use here, is completing the square. Okay, so for completing the square, um, you want to take the x squared minus 4x, and then you want to add or subtract something so that you can factor this as something squared. And then uh, after you do that, then maybe we can get it in the form 1 over a squared plus u squared using our good old formula that we used recently. Um, the integral 1 over a squared plus u squared du is 1 over a tan inverse of u over a plus c. So if we can just get it in this format, um, then we'll be good. So we're going to try to complete this square 
for the x squared minus 4x. Okay? So here our goal is to get it in the form integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared um, du so that we can use the tan inverse formula. Um, but in order to get it in that form, we're going to have to complete this square here so that instead of x squared minus 4x, we're just going to have a polynomial uh, squared, and then, then we'll be good, because then we can let that polynomial be u. Okay, so, um, so what we got to do here is complete the square. Complete the square. Okay, that is the trick. All right. So for x squared minus 4x, the second term is negative 4x. So what you do is when you're completing the square, the first thing you do is you divide the second term by 2. Okay, so divide by 2. So we get... Um, Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Okay. And then you square. Square that. Square the result, rather. Okay. So if we square the result, we're going to get negative 2 squared. But we put parentheses around it. So the negative actually cancels out because it's negative 2 times negative 2 which is going to be positive 4. Okay, so this positive 4 is what we need to complete the square. I'll put a little rectangle around it. That's what we're going to use to complete the square. Okay, so what we're going to do is we want to go ahead and add that in right there to complete the square. Okay, but the thing is you can't just add 4 and then just do that because you'd be changing the numbers. You'd be changing the problem. So what you have to do instead is you add 4, but then you also have to subtract 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0, and any number plus 0 is the number. Okay, so what we're going to do is we write down this whole integral. I'm going to stop writing the numbers for now. So we have the integral of 5 dx over the integral of 5 dx over 5 plus x squared minus 4x okay and then we're going to do the completing the square and what we want to do is we want to add 4 that's what we need to do to complete the square but because you can't just add a number out of nowhere you have to also subtract 4 so that you don't upset the balance here okay so we're also going to minus 4 because if you think about it, this plus 4 minus 4 is 0, and these numbers plus 0 is still those numbers. So it doesn't change anything. Okay, and then you'll notice the x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's the part where we're going to complete the square. And then with the 5 and the negative 4, we can combine those. Okay, those are like terms. And 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, so we're going to have the integral of 5 dx over 1 plus, well now the whole point of completing the square is to factor it. So this one's going to factor as x minus 2 times x minus 2. So that's going to be the quantity x minus 2 quantity squared. And you notice you got the minus 2. That's exactly the number we had. Um, when we divided by 2 before we squared it. So when we when we divided negative 4 by 2, we got negative 2, and boom, that negative 2 shows up right here. It's, it's always the same number. It's the number that you get when you take the middle term, you divide by 2 before you square it, that's, that's how it's going to factor. Okay, and then now we're good, um, because remember that 1 is the same as 1 squared, because 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so this one right here is just 1 squared. 
Okay, and we can also bring the five out front. So let's let's go ahead and do that. We don't need that up there. So if I bring the five out front and then move the the DX over here. So we're just gonna have a one on the top. And we've almost got it in the form we need it. So all we have to do now is um do the U substitution and identify what A and U are. So um, what we got here is A is the constant. So here A is going to be 1. Actually, let me use a different color for that. Okay, A equals 1. And then uh, U is going to be X minus 2. Okay, so U equals X minus 2. And then if I take the derivative here, I get DU DX equals 1. And then if I multiply both sides by dx, I get du equals dx. So this one's pretty easy to do the u substitution for. Okay, so now what we've got, let me zoom out a little bit. Now what we've got is we have a 5 out front. Okay, we have a 5 out front. And then we have the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared du, because remember on this problem dx is just the same as du. Okay, and the integral of 1 over a squared plus u squared du, we already said was this one right here. It's supposed to say du. I don't know why these say dx. That's not right. Okay, so anyway, that's going to be 1 over a tan inverse of u over a plus c. But we're not going to write a plus c because this is a definite integral. So we're going to have 5 times 1 over a tan inverse of u over a. Um, but we're not going to write a plus c. And then remember in this problem, a was 1 and u was x minus 2. So we have 5 times 1 over 1 times tan inverse of x minus 2 over 1. Okay, and then, you know, any number over 1 is just a number. So we don't, we don't need this 1 over 1, and we also don't need this 1 over here. So we're just going to have 5 times tan inverse of x minus 2. So plugging in here, we can leave the 5 out front. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and do the numbers that they gave us. So the limits of integration they gave us was x equals 2 and x equals 2 plus root 3. Oops. Okay, so we're going from x equals 2 to x equals 2 plus root 3. And now that we've gotten rid of the u and the a, we're able to go ahead and plug in x again. Okay, so we, we plug in the top number first, and then we subtract the function evaluated at the bottom number. And I went ahead and factored out the 5 since it's a constant. Okay, so we're going to have a 5 out front times tan inverse of parentheses 2 plus root 3 minus 2 minus tan inverse of 2 minus 2. Okay, so um, we got 5 times, put brackets around the whole thing, tan inverse of 2 plus root 3 minus 2 minus tan inverse of 2 minus 2. So here these 2s and these negative 2s cancel out. And then you have to remember or use a calculator to do your tan inverse. I like to use the unit circle. And that is in your formula sheet. So let's let's go over that real quick. So we have 5 times tan inverse of root 3 minus tan inverse of 0. The tan inverse of 0 I can handle, but for tan inverse of root 3, I might want to use a unit circle. Okay, or you could just use a calculator. There are a lot of calculators who will, that will do that for you. But let's go to the unit circle. So if you go to the second page of your um, formula sheet, 
zoom in on the unit circle here. Um, under trigonometry, we have a unit circle. So let's start with the tan inverse of root 3. Um, remember that tan inverse of root 3 is going to be, um, that's the same as root 3 over 1. Okay, so why am I writing it that way? Well, remember, you don't have root 3 and 1 on the unit circle, but what you do have is if you multiply the top and the bottom by 1 half, then you get a little magic there. So you get tan inverse of root 3 over 2 on the top and then 1 half on the bottom. Okay. And remember that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Okay, so tangent of theta equals sine of theta over cosine of theta, which is the same as y over x on the unit circle. And yeah, you're right. I probably should just use a calculator, but it's fine. Okay, so here we can see that y is going to be root 3 over 2, and then x is going to be 1 half. Okay. So, looking at the unit circle, y is root 3 over 2, and x is 1 half, so our angle is pi over 3. All right, so tan inverse of root 3 is actually just pi over 3. But many of you could probably just do that in your head. Okay, so just writing it up here, we have 5 times pi over 3 minus um, tan inverse of 0. You shouldn't even need the unit circle for that. I mean, you got sine over cosine. If sine is 0... That's the y coordinate, and cosine is 1, that's the x coordinate, then that means you're at 0. So you got 5 times pi over 3 minus 0, and so that's just going to be 5 pi over 3. So that's going to be our answer. Okay, so again, the tan inverse of 0, unit circle. Um, you know, tangent, tangent of theta is sine over cosine, sine of theta over cosine of theta, okay, which is y over x, but for tan inverse of 0, you've got 0 over 1, so y is going to be 0 and x is going to be 1. So if x is 1 and y is 0 on your unit circle, that means you're right here, 1 comma 0, so your angle is either 0 or 2 pi. But we're just writing 0. Okay, so 5 pi over 3 is the answer. And that's what they got too, so that's good. We did it right. Okay, cool. So there's still a couple more tricks I want to show you. Okay, so that was, let's see, that was problem number 2. Is that right? Yeah, number 2. Okay, so let's take a look at one or two more. So this is number 3. So for problem number three, it looks like it ought to be easy. It's an integral of 16 dx over secant of 2x minus 1. Integral of 16 dx over secant of 2x minus 1. Okay. So now, the way this is written, you can't use u substitution, unfortunately. Um, you might think, well, let's see, secant is 1 over cosine. You could build these to a common denominator. So you could have cosine on the top and cosine minus something on the bottom. But when you take the derivative of cosine, you get sine. So stuff is not really going to cancel out if you do that. Um, well, maybe it will, but... I think the way that they were they were looking for you to simplify this is using the conjugate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Okay, 
multiply um, by the conjugate. And when I say multiply by the conjugate, I can't just multiply on the bottom because I'd be changing the fraction. So I also have to multiply on the top. Okay, so what is the conjugate? Conjugate just means uh, you switch the sign of the second term. So you have two terms and you switch the sign of the second term. That's all it means. Switch sign of second term. That's, that's what the conjugate is. Okay, so here um, I'm talking about the conjugate of secant of 2x minus 1. So the second term right now is negative. To multiply by the conjugate, it becomes positive. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by secant of 2x plus 1. And we're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing. So that's the same as multiplying by 1. So we're not actually changing the integral. We're just rewriting it in a way um, where we can do math. Okay, and you might be wondering, well, where's he going with this? How is this going to help us? Well, um, the reason you do the conjugate is then you can use identities in the denominator. You can use a trigonometric identity. In the numerator, you can't do much. But in the denominator, you can do something. Okay, so on the top, I'm just going to go ahead and um, bring out the 16 out front. Okay, so on the top we have 16 times the integral of secant of 2x plus 1 dx. Okay. Secant of 2x plus 1 and then we're going to have a dx way over here. And then on the bottom, we go ahead and multiply this out with FOIL, which ends up being the same as the difference of squares. Because when you're multiplying by the conjugate, FOIL ends up just giving you the difference of squares. Okay, so you get secant squared of 2x is your first. Okay, so you have secant squared of 2x is your first. And then your outer and your inner cancel out because one of them is positive and the other one's negative secant of 2x. So those cancel out. And then your last is negative 1 times positive 1, which is negative 1. So in our denominator here, we're actually just going to have secant squared of 2x minus 1. Okay, and I know at this point it looks like we're making it more complicated. And we are. But... What we can do here is we can actually use a formula. Um, we can use a formula for a trigonometric identity is what we're going to use here. So for the secant squared of 2x minus 1, that's what we're going to be able to use a trigonometric identity for. Okay, so let me zoom out. We're on the second page, and we're looking for secant squared. So here, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. Okay, so. So from our formula sheet, we have tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. Okay, that's straight out of the formula sheet. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. And then um, we want to get it in the form secant squared of theta minus 1, because that's what we have written here. Okay, so if I minus 1 from both sides, I get tangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta minus 1. But here we can see that our theta is actually just going to be 2x. Okay, because it's secant squared of 2x minus 1. So this secant squared of theta minus 1 is going to be tangent squared of theta, which is tangent squared of 2x. I'm not 100% sure this is going to work, but I have a good feeling like it'll probably work. Okay, so you have 16 times the integral of secant 
of 2x plus 1 all over uh, tangent squared of theta. But instead of theta, I should be writing 2x, because that was our theta here. Okay, and then this whole thing is dx times dx. Okay. So I know I, it looks like I've made it a lot more complicated, and I guess I have in some ways. But I have the feeling like stuff is going to cancel out here. Okay. So um, what I'm thinking is what I can do now is I can split up the integral into multiple parts. Um, so in the numerator, we have two things added together, so we can actually split it up into two fractions. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so split into two fractions. Because then stuff is going to cancel out for the first one, and then the second one we can use an identity. Okay, so for the first one, um, we have 16 times integral of secant of 2x over tangent squared of 2x dx okay plus 1 over tangent squared of 2x so I'm going to write that as a separate integral so we're going to have plus the integral of 1 over tangent squared of 2x dx. Okay, so 16 times the integral of secant of 2x plus 1 became 16 times the integral of secant of 2x dx plus integral of 1 dx. So all I did was I took these two, the secant of 2x and the plus 1, and I split it up into two separate fractions or two separate integrals. Okay, so now I have a better feeling about this, because I can use identities now. So first of all, let's start with the secant of 2x over tangent squared of 2x. So we have a 16 here, okay, which, you know, I don't really care about, but how do we deal with this? So we can go ahead and use identities here. So secant of 2x is the same as 1 over cosine of 2x. So for the first integral, we have the integral of 1 over cosine of 2x. And then in the denominator, tangent squared of 2x is the same as sine squared of 2x over cosine squared of 2x. OK? All right, and um, let's just work on the first integral for now. The second one's actually probably easier, but um, we're going to do that in a second. So let's focus on this integral. So if I cancel out this cosine of 2x and that cosine of 2x down there, this and the square are going to cancel out. And then if I go ahead and, since I'm dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So then I'm going to have... Um, cosine of 2x on the top, and sine squared of 2x on the bottom. Okay, so for our first integral here, now we're going to have integral of cosine of 2x on the top, and sine squared of 2x on the bottom. Okay. So the thing here is um, I'm just going to focus on this integral. I know there's a 16. I know there's another integral. But right now I'm just going to focus on this first integral until we're done with it. Okay, so here um, you want to use u substitution. And you want to let u be the inside of your composite function, the complicated one. So we're going to be letting u be uh, sine of 2x. Now why am I choosing that? Well, remember that sine squared of 2x is the same as sine of 2x 
quantity squared. Okay, so if I let u be sine of 2x, then du is going to be cosine of 2x times 2 dx, and those are going to cancel out. Okay, so that's why we're going to let u be sine of 2x. And if you can't see that far in, a, in advance, that's fine. You can always just try different things until it works. And t try different things for u until you figure out what works and what doesn't work. Okay, but here we're going to let u equal um, sine of 2x. So let me write it in the middle here. u equals sine of 2x. And then du dx equals 2 cosine of 2x, right? Because the derivative of sine is positive cosine. And then the derivative of 2x is 2. And then if we multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by 2 cosine of 2x, we get du over 2 cosine of 2x equals dx. Okay, and now we can go ahead and plug this in. So du over 2 cosine of 2x, we can plug that in for dx. And then the cosine of 2x's are going to cancel out. Okay, so we're going to have integral of cosine of 2x over u squared. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit so we have room. So we have the integral of cosine of 2x over u squared times, well, instead of dx, we're going to have du over 2 cosine of 2x. So as promised, the cosine of 2x's are going to cancel out, and we can bring the 1 half out front. So if we factor out the 1 half, and we can rewrite 1 over u squared as u to the negative 2. So we have 1 half integral of u to the negative 2 du. And um, so there we're going to use the power rule. Okay, so for the power rule, for integrals, you add to the exponent and you divide by the new exponent. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So we're going to get u to the negative 1. And then we divide by the new exponent. So we're going to divide by negative 1. But we still have a 1 half out front. Okay, so then if we bring the negative out front and plug back in the original expression, u equals sine of 2x, we're going to have negative 1 half times sine of 2x uh, to the negative 1 power. Okay, and then you need to realize that 1 over sine is the same as sine of 2x to the negative 1. So this is actually negative 1 half times 1 over sine of 2x. And 1 over sine is the same as cosecant of 2x. Okay, so we actually have negative 1 half cosecant of 2x. Okay. All right, so we <laughs> that, took a, that took me a while, but we took care of the first integral. That was the hard one. And then we still have a 16 out front. And do we have to plug in numbers on this one? No, we don't have to plug in numbers. Okay, so we're good there. So we have a 16 out front still. And then we just finished the first integral, negative 1 half cosecant of 2x. Okay. And then um, for the second integral, I get the feeling like this one's going to be easier. So once again, we have to use trig identities. So remember that 1 over tangent is the same as cotangent. So here we're going to have um, cotangent squared of 2x dx. I, I just realized I'm all zoomed out. Probably zoom back in a little bit. Okay, so this 1 over tangent squared of 2x is the same as 
um, cotangent squared of 2x. Okay, and you can't really integrate cotangent squared of 2x directly, but once again, you can use a trig identity. So the trig identity you want to use is 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Okay, that one right there. 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. Okay, so if I write that one over here, the formula we're using is 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. Um, but we just have cotangent squared of theta by itself. So I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. So I get cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta minus 1. Okay, so here, since our theta is 2x, we're actually going to have the integral of uh, cosecant squared of 2 theta, sorry, not 2 theta, 2x, uh, minus 1 dx. Okay, so cosecant squared of 2x minus 1 dx. And then now these are easy to integrate because we have formulas for these. Okay, so then this is going to make this integral a lot easier than the other one. Okay, so for this one, the integral of cosecant squared is just cotangent. So if I go back, it's negative cotangent. Here it is, right here. Integral of cosecant squared of u du is negative cotangent of u plus c. Okay, so here um, our u is going to be 2x, and then once you do the whole song and dance of u substitution, you're going to end up dividing by 2. So you're going to end up with uh, 1 half times negative cotangent of 2x. Okay. Do I need to explain that? Maybe I should explain that. So the cosecant squared of 2x, for that one, your u is going to be 2x. So over here, we have u equals 2x. So du dx equals 2. So du over 2 equals dx. Okay, and then when I plug that in for dx, um, For for this first for this uh, first term here, then you're going to end up with du over two, so that's how I got a one half. Okay, so you got negative cotangent of two x, and then you have a one half because of the du over two. Now for the second term, the integral of negative dx is just going to be negative x, so we're going to have minus x here. Okay, so really we just have negative one half cotangent of 2x minus x. And then don't forget this whole thing is multiplied by um, a 16. And then we also have a plus c at the end. Okay, so if I go ahead and bring this way down to where my other integral was, negative 1 half cotangent of 2x minus x. Negative 1 half cotangent of 2x minus x, and then we have a plus c here. Um, all we really have to do at this point is uh, just distribute, okay? So we just need to distribute the 16. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so if I distribute the 16 to each of those terms, 16 times negative 1 half is negative 8. So we have negative 8 cosecant of 2x. And then 16 times negative 1 half is negative 8 cotangent of 2x. And then 16 times negative x is negative 16x. Okay, and then we have plus c. So we have negative 8 cosecant of 2x minus 8 cotangent of 2x minus 16x plus c. And that's exactly what they got, so we're good. Ooh, that was a workout. That one was a mental workout.
Okay. All right, so I just wanted to do one more example. One more. Okay, so this is going to be example number four. This is our last one. Okay. Um, so for this one, we have another indefinite integral. So for this one, we actually have the integral of ln to the fourth of y all over 6y plus 7y ln to the fifth of y. And then this whole integral is multiplied by dy. So now here, this one is tricky, just because it looks so complicated, and it is complicated. Uh, so the question is, what do we let our u be? What can we let u be here? Uh, so what we can let u be, well, we can try a lot of different things. Um, but I'm thinking what we should do is... Looking at this big denominator down here, I'm thinking we should probably let u be something like ln of y or something like that. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's tricky. No, ln of y wouldn't work. How about ln to the fifth of y? Actually, that might work. So I'm trying to think through it in my head. ln to the fifth of y, when you take the derivative of that, the outer function is going to become 5 ln to the fourth, which is going to cancel with this one. So that would be good. And then for the inner function, we're going to have 1 over y, which is going to, give it, which is going to cancel out with these y's down here. Um, so I think that that would be the one we want to choose. Okay, so, um, but you know, you're welcome to try different things. But unfortunately, with these tough advanced integration problems, it's usually only one thing or maybe two things that actually work. Um, so with this one, it's just a really tricky u substitution. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to. I think I'm going to let u be ln to the fifth of y. But that's only. I only know about that because I've been doing it for a long time done a lot of calculus problems. Um, and I'm still not 100% sure that'll work. Okay, so if we if we let u be ln to the fifth of y, then um, when we take the derivative, remember that ln to the fifth of y is the same as ln of y to the fifth power. Okay, so your outer function is the fifth power and your inner function is ln. Okay, so when you take the derivative, you get du dy equals, well, if I bring, if I use the power rule on the outer function, I'm going to bring the 5 out front and decrease the exponent by 1. So I get 5 times ln of y to the fourth. But then I have to multiply this times the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of ln of y is 1 over y. So we're actually going to have a 1 over y here. And this is definitely the hardest one from this homework. I, I'm just realizing that now. Um, just because it's so tricky to think of what to, to let u be. This is technically just u substitution, but it's, it's tricky because it's so complicated. Um, so here, you got an ln to the fourth of y and then a 1 over y. Okay, so let me simplify that a little bit. So we have du dy equals, in the numerator we have 5 ln to the fourth of y, and then in the denominator we have y. Okay, and then if you want to do it my way, that's a nice way of doing it, um, you can go ahead and isolate dy. Normally we'd be isolating dx, but in this case, it's dy, you know, because our, our independent variable is actually y here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by dy, and then multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the right side. Okay, so on the left side, we're going to have y du 
in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 5 ln to the fourth of y. And then on the right side, we're just going to have dy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in y du over 5 ln to the fourth of y. We're plugging that in for dy. Okay, so, oops, drag that down. Um, so plugging in up here, actually I think I'm going to zoom out because this is so big. So what we've got here is the integral of ln to the fourth of y over uh, 6y plus 7yu because we said our u was going to be ln to the fifth of y. And then our uh, dy we're replacing with y du over 5 ln to the fourth of y. y du over 5 ln to the fourth of y. And um, because I'm pro about it, I noticed that the derivative of um, ln to the fifth of y is ln to the fourth of y, so I knew that these were going to cancel out, and then I also remembered that um, the derivative of the inner function ln of y is 1 over y, so that's going to end up canceling out with these y's when I factor them out. Okay, so a lot of stuff is going to cancel out here, but that's a, that's a really tough problem. Um, so I'm glad I'm doing an example, because my example is very similar to the homework, so you'll be good for this homework. All right, so we got these ln of fourth of y's canceling out. And then um, on the bottom here, we can actually factor out a y as a common factor. Okay, so we've got the integral of, in the numerator, we have y du. And then in the denominator, we have y times 6 plus 7u. And then we still have a 5 down here. Okay. So all I did in that step is I factored out a y from the 6y and the 7y on the bottom. And I canceled out the ln to the fourth of y's. And so now we can see that these y's cancel out. There's a y on the top and a y on the bottom. And I can go ahead and factor the one-fifth out front. So if I factor the one-fifth out front, I get one-fifth times the integral of du over 6 plus 7u. Now you might be thinking, well, that's no good. I mean, our integral has to be something that we can integrate directly, right? Well, no, not necessarily. So here, even though this is in terms of u, you're actually allowed to make another substitution in order to finish the integral. You, you can make as many u substitutions as you want. It's just this time, instead of calling it u, we're going to have a different variable. I'm going to call it v. Okay, so I'm going to basically do another u substitution, but this time I'm going to call it a different letter, and I usually just do v for my next letter. Okay, so we're going to let v equal the denominator. So v is going to equal 6 plus 7u. And then we're going to get um, dv du. Now, why is it dv du? Well, v is my second u substitution. And then here, my independent variable is actually u. A little strange, but that's how it works. Okay, so dv du is going to be the derivative of 6, which is 0 plus 7. Okay, so we have dv du equals 7. And then if I divide both sides by 7 and multiply both sides by du, I get dv over 7 equals du. Okay, so now I can go ahead and plug in. So now I've got this 1 fifth times the integral of 1 over 6 plus 7u. That's just going to be 1 over v. 
And then um, for the du, I'm plugging in dv over 7. Okay, so I'm doing a second u substitution, but I'm calling it v because I don't want to get it confused with the other u. Okay, so then um, if I factor this, the 1 7th out front, I'm going to get 1 5th times 1 7th. times the integral of 1 over v dv. Okay, and multiplying straight across, we get 1 times 1 is 1 over 5 times 7 is 35. So we have 1 over 35 times the integral of 1 over v dv. The integral of 1 over v is just natural log of absolute value of v. And fortunately, even though this is a tough problem, I believe this one was an indefinite integral, so we're not going to have to plug in numbers at the end. But it still is a very tough problem. Um, okay, but we are going to write a plus c at the end because it's an indefinite integral. But be careful, we are not done. So right now it's in terms of v. So what we're going to have to do is first we plug back in v in terms of u, so we said v was 6 plus 7u. So here we have 1 over 35 times ln of absolute value of 6 plus 7u. But remember, our original integral wasn't in terms of u, it was in terms of y. So now we have to plug back in what u was. So in the original problem, I decided to let u be ln to the fifth of y, because that's what worked for canceling stuff out. So we have ln to the fifth of y instead of u. Okay, so we have 1 over 35 ln of absolute value of 6 plus 7 ln to the fifth of y plus c. I'm curious how they wrote it on my math lab. I don't want to see that. Oh, they just left it this way. Okay. Well, that that's probably what I would have done anyway. So, um, so that's how that, that's how we leave our answer. And I know this is a really tough problem, but hopefully you'll watch this video, so it makes it a heck of a lot easier uh, seeing me do it. Okay. Well, that's it. That's our last example. Thanks for watching.